All right, this has got to go. What is this webcam situation? Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson. I am an employee over at Domo. I'm a technical success manager. I work with customers to help them achieve technical success. Uh, as you can see, I'm working from home. Everybody's got coronavirus, so we were told not to come into the office. Um, but that doesn't mean that com clients stop needing help. So it is my goal for the time that I'm working from home every day to answer at least one question that I see in the Domo Dojo and make a video response to it. We'll see how long that lasts. This question came in from the Wizard of Oz, and the Wizard of Oz was asking, how do I create a beast mode for email open rate? Now, just because you maybe don't care about email open rates, stick around because at the end of the day, what I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to teach you how to use windowed functions to create a running total or a grand or subtotal inside of a beast mode without aggregating the data in ETL. Yeah, that sounds pretty vague. Stay with me. I'll try to keep this short. The general gist of the use case is if you think about like how uh, email campaigns work, on the, on the first day of the month, I'll send out my email campaign to 20 people. Now, everybody doesn't open it on the same day. Five people will open it on the first, two people will open it on the second, three people will open it on the third, and so on. But when I calculate open rate, I want open rate to be the cumulative sum of open divided by the cumulative sum for send. So what does that look like? And this on, uh, how do I do this? On this row, it's five divided by 20, fine. But this on the second, the number is five plus two is seven, divided by 20 plus zero is 20, so that's 35%, 45% and so on. How do I do this in Domo? Now, our man, let's see who submitted an answer. Grant Smith. Uh, Grant Smith um, demonstrates how you can do this in ETL. So Grant is showing how to use, uh, what is this, MySQL um, to create what are these subqueries in here to answer the question. This will get the job done. But the biggest downside to pre-aggregating your data in ETL is that it won't respond to filters on the page or at the card level. So for example, if I used Grant's e data set and I said, oh, you know what? I just want to see for the people in North America, or I just want to see people whose last name starts with a W. Right? If I wanted to add filters to the set of data I'm considering, um, because this is pre-aggregated, my, my, my card would not respond to filters, so that's obviously something I want to avoid, and that's why we're going to do this as a beast mode. Small disclaimer, and this is important, the techniques that I'm going to show you are kind of supported technically, but not really use at your own risk. Okay? There, are, there is a feature switch that we have to get turned on in order for the windowed function support to work. So you have to talk to your CSM or you can email me um, and we can get you sorted out if you want to try and experiment with this on your own. In any event, uh, jumping into it now, uh, I've uploaded my data into Domo kind of as a little dummy data set here and you can see um, it's just a web form where I have data in a similar shape but what I did differently is I have two months worth of data. So I have d data in January as well as February. Let's make some magic. Uh, I strongly recommend when you're, ex especially when you're experimenting with windowed functions, build a table card first, make sure it works as a table card, and then uh, you know, turn it into a gauge or a pie chart or something fancy. Uh, so Domo took a guess, it said, I think, for dates, uh, let's just do no aggregation for now. So for dates, I'm going to give you the sum of sent and the sum of opens. Cool. And I can see I've got sent two rows that contain sent and a lot of rows that contain opens. And just, just so we know what a, the grand total is, the grand total is 245 and 140. Okay, good to know. Let me put date back on the axis. 
So question number one, how could I get a grand total? Let's, let's just sort that out. I'm going to add a calculated field, and I'm going to create a grand total. Uh, so if I did sum of opens, you know what to expect. You would expect for each row or for each date, what were the total opens? That's not what I want. I want the grand total. To create, create the grand total, we're going to use what are called windowed functions. Now, this is a term that you can Google. This is not a domo thing. This is a standard SQL thing. Um, so, and, and many versions of SQL will have some flavor of windowed functions. Redshift ETL has it. Um, MySQL ETL does not really support windowed functions in the version of MySQL we have at Domo, but you can implement windowed functions using what are called user-defined variables, I think. That's for MySQL. Anyway, what I want to do, sorry, let me do standard SQL first. If you were writing standard SQL and they introduced you to windowed functions, it would look something like this. It says, take the sum of opens over a window. In this case, by not putting anything in the over clause, I'm basically saying, give me the sum of opens over a window of the entire data set. So I believe if I'm right, this should be the grand total. So I'm going to move my, I'm going to try not to move this webcam too much, but let's see what I get. I get an error. Ah, yes. I get an error because Domo's a little bit weird. Um, I can guess why this syntax is the way it is, but it's, it doesn't always work like normal, normal SQL. This is not standard SQL syntax. This is standard SQL syntax, but this is going to work in Domo. Ha! So now I get a grand total of 140, which is, and we, we saw that earlier, the grand total 140 is the sum of opens over a window of the entire data set. Very cool. Now you might say, Jay, that's, that's a cool party trick. I don't want that. Can you give me the sum of opens um, per month, a subtotal, let's say? So we're going to go back to the sum, sum opens over. Again, that will give me the grand total. Now to subtotal, I have to create what's called a partition. I have to say, take my window and make it the partition of a month. So how do I get the month of the date? Well, that's the month of the date, right? This bit here will evaluate to January, February, March, April, May, or really one, two, three, four, right? So basically, um, what's going to happen is when I'm looking at 1 1 20, 20, it'll say the month of that date is 1. And so for all of the rows in the window, or sorry, for all the rows in the partition where the month is 1, let's take the sum for that just the group where the month is 1. So this is going to create a uh, windowed function over a partition or so let's say we're, that resets, let me use normal English, that resets every month. Let's see what that looks like. Um, per. Okay. In the first month, I had 118 opens. In the second month, I had 22 opens. Is 22 plus 118, 140, I guess? I'm bad at math, but there you go. I can see right here, it resets from month to month. Good stuff. I've introduced you to, the, to windowed functions in its most basic form using a uh, grand total, which is the over, by, over clause with nothing in it. We did a partition, which causes it to reset. Um, and you could do this like, I want to 
see total sales by salesperson per region. That per region part or something like that would give you your subtotal. Okay, useful, but not what we want. What we want is we want to see a cumulative total. So a cumulative total will again be the sum sum uh, opens over. This time, instead of adding the partition by clause, we're going to take a look at what happens if I do the order by clause. I'm going to order by date. Yep, let's see. Let's grab that cumulative total in here. All right. So what have we here? Can I stop showing my data table? OK. So let me zoom in a little bit. Huh. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1, 3, 5 is 9. 1, 3, 5, and 4 is 13. You can see here I have a cumulative total going on. Very exciting. But what's a little bit less exciting is the fact that when I transition from sorry, you can't see it. Let's try that again. Uh, yeah, when I transition from um, January to February, so when I go from yeah, when I go from January to February, the counter does not reset. The counter keeps on going all the way up to through the end of year, as it were, giving my cumulative or my running total. Um, and of course, that makes sense. In order to get the number to reset per month, I have to partition by month. So I'm going to alter this guy and add a partition by clause like we did earlier, to partition the window by the month of date. Is that how you spell partition? Partition. Par. Yeah, let's validate that formula. So in my over by clause, I can have both a partition by and an order by clause. And let's see what happens now. It looks the same, 1, 4, 13, 9, la, la, la. What happens here? Look at that. That's, uh, that is glorious. Right here, I'm saying all the way through January, I do my cumulative number, and then I reset the counter at 20, or in February, because I've partitioned by month. Very cool. All of these numbers are very exciting, but they're not quite what the person asked for. The person asked for an open rate. So how do I calculate the open rate? It will be, well, I'm going to actually intentionally do it wrong first. So if I do sum of opens divided by the um, send, send, hopefully you guys know right away why this doesn't work. And if you don't, that's okay, I'll tell you. The reason why this won't work is because by putting this math inside of an aggregate function, what this says is for each row, calculate open divided by cent. For each row. And then take the sum of that number. Now that won't work because I didn't send data every day. I only sent it on the first day. So I need to use that cumulative math that we were looking at earlier. I'm just going to be lazy. I'm going to take my cumulative opens. Yep. Oh, it doesn't have my partition by. Let's get that in there. And then I'm going to divide it by the same thing for my cent.
and this should be open rate ratio. That seems seems like a, I'm repeating myself. Oh, what did I do wrong, friends? Oh, extra parentheses. So let's put my open rate in now. Let's see. What's going to be the best way to validate this? All right. Let's turn this into a percentage. You blow this up a little bit easy so you can see. All right. So on the first day, I have 1 divided by 200, which is 0.5, which rounds up to 1. That checks. And now I have 1 plus 3 is 4 divided by 2, which is actually 100, is actually 2%. Then 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 divided by 200 checks out 5% and so on. Cool. Open rate ratio seems to be working. It will increase, increase, increase all the way until the last day I have data for in January, and then it will plummet down to that 2% number in Feb because I sent out 45 and I only had one open. There you go. The math checks out. So, Mr. Oz, uh, in conclusion, I have demonstrated in this video how to calculate your open rates using what are called windowed functions in beast modes. And again, the reason why we spent all of this time writing Arcane SQL is because if you do it as an ETL in Domo, one, it takes time, and then two, it doesn't respond to filters. So hopefully that was valuable for you. Good luck. Um, if you guys ever, if you guys have a question, make sure to put it in Domo Dojo. If you want to make sure that I answer it or see if I can make a video for you, make sure to ping me, uh, j.wilson at domo.com, uh, and I'll try to help you out. Thanks so much, guys. Catch you later. Bye.